if anybody plays an instrument, um, we're always trying to add instruments either to him. I would love to be able to add in some more. I think I could play the trumpet. That would be so awesome. Okay. Um, but we like to add, you know, flute. Um, I, I recently found out that we have like eight kids in the congregation that play flute. So I'm going to try and get them together to put something together in the little mini flute choir. Um, but we've got a couple trombones. Just um, knowing what we have instrument-wise in the congregation, every once in a while I'll, I'll call and beg you to play, play with one of the choirs. And there's some fun music that has some really neat lines to it. I can make it big, especially for festival holidays. It's really nice. Like Easter, I love to have a trumpet. Yeah. So um, along that line, one of the one of the cool things was we were able to keep all of our special music going all the way through the pandemic. So we did not miss a single service from the time that everything locked down. The youth bells played in church on that Sunday, and that night is when they announced that we were doing lockdown. Um, we were able to have special music, either recorded or uh, live with nobody else at, in the congregation, um, all the way through. Um, I think the first service that we didn't have anything for was Advent last year, last, last fall. So we um, had people that were really interested and invested in continuing to provide special music as a way of edifying our congregation. And they really stepped up. So it was, it was kind of cool to see that and to see them working together and, and working for the goal together. That was for the good of the church. And that was pretty, that was pretty cool to see. So anybody who has been here a while, Todd or Amy, can tell you what our music program has done uh, since Lauren took over. So it's it's been one step at a time, but uh, it is, resembles nothing of what it used to be. So, well, it was music before, but uh, the involvement, the variety of things happening now. You two want to toss anything in there? That... Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lauren doesn't take well for praises. I've, I've tried to compliment her a thousand times, and she just always brings it off. But um, she's a great strike. She just keeps walking. <laughs> she, she's always so busy. She's always on the road. Okay, uh, the next day. Exactly. Um, we, our, our, our parents live out of town, and so when they come, they're always like, what's going to be the music? Because they, they are from a small rural uh, community and don't have the musicianship that we have. Um, and so I think that the longer that you're here, you'll understand my next statement. It's truly amazing, the music that um, Warren puts together for us on, you know, on, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. Yeah. The, it's, it's the people in the congregation that are wanting to give them those talents. And I just, and the age of some of the, well, again, uh, some of the, I'm going, I can't keep up. I'm not sure how reasonable. Well, the trio that played last <coughs> Sunday was, <coughs> um, I don't know that. The average, they're sixth graders. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, they just finished sixth grade. And, and they were they were passing bells as fast as they could <laughs> between, between the three of them. And I looked at my wife and I said, I would have passed out. <laughs> but, but do you know what the cool part about that is for me? Was they came to me and said, we want to play something. Will you help us find some music? Yep. It was their idea. And the best part is they wanted to pray for the service. They want, their hearts were in the right place about this is an offering. We're not doing this to perform, but we're here because this is an offering. This is giving back our gifts. And that... That made me happy. <laughs> it, it, that, that's one example of many of, of the blessing of music that we have here. But seriously, I would love to have you join us. Um, our, our choir, we would love to have some more singers or ringers. Um, and if, you, if anybody has got kids, if you want to get involved, just let me know. Is my email in that? It's, it's in the director. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing I'll tell you is my name has it's L A U R A N, and sometimes people say, "Oh Lord," and they type it in real fast, and there's an E, and then it doesn't get to me. So, um, but please, if if you have any questions or um, you know how can I get involved, just send me an email, and we'll get to it. Thank you very much. All right, we've heard from a lot of interesting people this morning, and more background about the church and the opportunity. 
Now, I'm going to put Vicar on the spot now because I didn't give him advance notice. But Vicar, I want you to come up here and, and tell this group a little bit about uh, what you've been doing. And unfortunately, his time in Beautiful Savior is coming to an end. But the Vicarage program and where he's going uh, after July. So. Um, so, Vicarage here is like the best thing in the world. Uh, truly, it's been uh, just a fantastic experience. Uh, not, not every vicarage is like that, so um, I am blessed to uh, have been here for the past year. Uh, beautiful Savior, if you don't know, has had a vicar for maybe a, the last like 11 or 12 or more years. Um, and so the congregation really knows how to uh, train future pastors, and that's one of the first things that uh, Pastor Schultz told me uh, when we met. He actually got to come to uh, the call day service last year when I was assigned to Beautiful Savior, and uh, he took me and my whole family, which was like my grandma, uh, two of my aunts, my parents, wife, kids, all out to uh, dinner. Uh, and uh, talked about Beautiful Savior and the, the mission of having a vicar every year. Uh, truly, the congregation has a desire to train future pastors to be faithful uh, in their future ministry. And Pastor Schultz is a teacher and uh, by nature, and he, uh, I have learned so, so much. Uh, and I learn more every single week, and it'll be uh, very difficult for me and my family to leave. The people of this congregation have been absolutely uh, fantastic to us. Uh, my wife meets with a lady in the congregation like once a week. Uh, she watches her grandkid, and so they go on play dates every week. And uh, my wife has also uh, hung out with the the beautiful moms in Christ group and gone on some play dates with moms in the congregation and things like that uh, and so they've been really busy this year uh, which has been uh, really excellent and um, so I as vicar I've gotten pretty much uh, uh, as wide a breadth of experience that you can have on vicarage I think there's maybe one thing I haven't experienced on vicarage and that's a wedding uh, I haven't seen a wedding uh, but Pretty much everything else jumped right in with teaching Bible study with Pastor Schultz, and I learned from him, uh, watched him for a couple weeks before I got to teach Sunday morning about adult Bible study, and just in those couple weeks, like, was picking up things like crazy, just tips just from watching him. So when everybody has said that Pastor Schultz is an amazing Bible study teacher, uh, it is 110% true. Uh, Bible study, I was surprised. I didn't know what that was going to be like for me. I didn't know how I was going to do with Bible study. Um, truly one of the most exciting things about Vicarage has been Sunday morning Bible study. It's been fantastic. Um, other Bible studies throughout the week, I've, I taught pre-confirmation fifth and sixth graders, which every vicar will do, alternating between. Uh, I taught New Testament, so the new vicar will teach Old Testament. Uh, so through the school year ending in, uh, typically ends before Ash Wednesday. Uh, and then I've gone on a lot of house visits with pastors to give communion uh, to members, gone on a, a lot of hospital visits as well, and uh, that is one of the, really one of the main reasons actually that I entered the seminary was to uh, walk through people, or walk with people through uh, their most difficult times, and so uh, getting to do that has been a joy in the conversations with with people that I have, and to be able to do that is fantastic. Um, and truly, the yeah, this congregation is awesome to its vicars. That's all I can say. It's, been, you, it's been really great. I just checked, and, and we started the vicarage program actually back in, uh, it's not listed here, but we started with Pastor Fritz. Vicar Philippeck, once he graduated, we had back with all the uh, assistant pastors. So, but we didn't have it, it wasn't every year. We had some hit and misses in that. And uh, at that point we decided, I think I mentioned last week, that the Vicarage program for us, again, is a very important mission program. 
it costs our congregation time and money to to set up and operate the vicarage program, but it's something we give back. And, and the great thing about it is we've got a wonderful team of pastors here who are amazing at teaching a vicar what it's like to be a pastor. Some churches, they get a vicar and all of a sudden they catch up on painting, landscape, gardening. Uh, I mean, it's not helping them to become a pastor. So, you know, the, the, when was your first sermon after you came? August 15th. So I, I was installed. I was installed July 25th. Had a newborn July 30th, and then preached, taught Bible study the next Sunday, and preached the next Sunday. <laughs> it was awesome. It was it was baptism by fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tossing him into the fire. So, but when he goes out to take you know a congregation of his own, we'll be very fortunate to have him. Um, he's going to get tossed in. I mean, it's here you are. Well, unless he goes in as an assistant pastor, but with vacancies, and there's a good chance that when he graduates in another year, he, you know, that could very well wind up with his very own congregation. So we feel we have to teach him what's important in serving a congregation, what's important in helping to operate and maintain the local church body, and uh, lead it so that it's successful. So for us, you know, if you hear about this, it's 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 an important and integral part of, of what we're doing here. And, uh, Todd, the church council, um, everybody gets involved. There's there's time involved in the vicarage program, but it's extremely worthwhile for all of us. Well, and we felt that as the vicarage program has grown, that it's important for the vicars to see what goes on behind the scenes as well. Um, you know, and that includes everything from slate of officers to budget processes to bylaw changes to whatever it, it takes in order to, you know, maintain the church and, and to move the body of Christ forward. And so it's not just, you know, the, the wonderful 40 minutes that we did here <laughs> Sunday morning for, for preaching. Um, you know, there's a host of other things that go on behind the scenes that we feel it's important to be able to have those experiences as well. You know, we had Vicar sit in on uh, staff reviews. So he knows what it's like, you know, what the staff, we review all of our staff members yearly. We talk about what's going great, what areas we might be able to improve, and then we also have a new program for installing called the Church Worker Care Team, where we, we want to take care of our pastors, and we want to take care of our vicars. And so we sit down with them once or twice a year they and their wives have to fill out questionnaires about how they're doing physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. Because we don't want to wait until something weighs them down so heavily that they have a problem functioning. So we're you know, intentionally looking at them and saying, what can we do to help? What can we do to keep you healthy and as a result our congregation healthy? And, and uh, Vicar and his wife were part of that process about how is our vicarage program doing? How are we doing with receiving new families and helping them acclimate to the church and the community? Um, and then we just finished one last week about, well, what do you think? What do we do right? What do we do wrong? What can we improve? So there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you know, what you see Sunday is the tip of the iceberg. What happens behind the scenes to make Sunday happen is the work of a church that you don't see unless you're involved in a board or a council or some activity like that. So, uh, Vicar saw some good and saw some tough and some, you know, not so fun, but, you know, I, I'd say uh, one of the biggest things is hospital and well visit. Uh, things that uh, have an important impact uh, upon everybody in the congregation. And especially some of those in the congregation, some of us who are getting a little more senior now. Uh, but again, you know, those visits, how are you doing? You know, are you, uh, you know, he participated in uh, taking communion to shut it. We have, uh, have not been here and been, uh, not able to take uh, communion in church. So. 
you know, the program with our Vickers has been very well-rounded. Um, we think it's a great program, but we think we can always improve it. So we asked for a suggestion from Vickers and his wife. So, well, it, it's a it's a great congregation too. That uh, I have learned both uh, pastoral ministry things, but to Todd's point on on the council and everything, uh, you have a senior pastor and an associate pastor, pastoral staff here that that. Uh, even if if budget stuff or business side of things in the congregation are not their forte, right? They're trained in theology. Uh, I learned from Pastor Schultz and the boards together uh, that even if that's not like pastor's expertise, boy, he is involved in every like he <laughs> knows what's going on uh, in the church, and that's so important. So it hasn't just been theological either. It's been how to work together with various boards and people to get the, the business of the church done. It's been uh, pretty incredible to see and witness. <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to ask, any other questions about the, the church, the congregation, or um, anything from, a, from the business side of the house that I might attempt to answer? Well, good group. Absolutely. <laughs> We're thrilled that you're here. Um, for, for anything, questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, as Jeff McConnell said earlier, um, you know, talk to your elder. I'm always available. Um, you know, certainly Phil and, and of course our pastoral staff are always available to you for whatever the need is, um, the good and the bad. Um, you got a job promotion. We want to we want to celebrate that with you. <coughs> you know, any of those types of things. And then of course, you know, life happens and, and uh, we need people to lean on occasionally. So. Um, that's what that's what the body of Christ is for, and that's what we're for. Uh, that's why we, you know we're here as well. So um, we want to help everyone get through whatever scenario that they're in. So Phil, anything that I missed or no, I think we, we all that I can remember now anyway. So um, please make sure you get your sheets turned in. You, know, you don't have to turn them in today, but uh, next Sunday, uh, hopefully, uh, Pastor is going to leave the group next week. There will be out of town, but. Uh, for those of you, um, we have more name tags and envelopes up here and your mailbox numbers. So, uh, <coughs> have a great week, everybody. Thank you. So where are you, where are you head off? St. Louis National Cemetery. Right here. <laughs> July 26th. <laughs> So a month, a month from this Sunday, from next, from the week, from today. So it, it's up to the vicar to find a place, but they have then a housing allowance. So I have housing allowance built into like. So you find your own place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Turn off the recording.